Hey, Remo viewers, it's Lori Williams, and today is time again for your PRV moment. So in today's PRV moment, I want to ask you some questions, and I want you to really think about the answers. Now, at this point in time, I would hope that you're still doing practice targets and that you're not taking on targets from people you don't know. But how do we know that we're safe when we take on a target from someone else? That's a good question. When I teach a project management class, one of the things I like to teach people to do is how to vet the tasker. What does it mean to vet the tasker? Well, the tasker is the person who has the question. It could be your next door neighbor saying, oh, you, you know how to remote view? Oh my gosh, do I have a target for you? Okay, but what is your next door neighbor's motive? Why does he or she want you to do a target for them? Now, it could be something as simple as they haven't been able to find the TV remote, and they're hoping you could describe the location where they could find the TV remote. I've done that several times, um, helping people find keys and things like that in their homes. And those are pretty innocent, benign targets. As long as the TV remote isn't in some very strange place, you're probably pretty safe with that. But at the same time, a remote viewer could be in danger of receiving a target and viewing for someone whose motives are not that pure. So what do you do? How do you know? How can you protect yourself? That's the question. So one of the ways that we do that is you want to have a project manager, someone to act as a go-between between between you and the person needing the information. And then it would be that person's job to check out who this person is and why they want you to do a session. Is it a treasure hunter looking for something? And if so, does that treasure hunter have a right to whatever he or she is looking for? Is what he or she is looking for on private land that they may not even be able to access, which would make your whole session a waste of time? I'll give you a few more examples. Uh, People looking for missing people. I think we've talked about this before, but I get a lot of requests like, please, you know, help us find this missing person. And it just, the person, the tasker in this case, is someone who doesn't even know the missing person. Read about in the paper, decided they would ask you to do it. That's a waste of your time and a waste of theirs. It doesn't help our cause to create integrity for remote viewing if we have um, a bunch of new viewers who are trying to find missing people and giving erroneous information to the police because they're inexperienced. So that's why we always say, don't get the magician's apprentice syndrome. Take your time Let yourself gain the experience that you need so that you can be part of a team that's working on remote viewing things that are really important, whether it's a missing person or something else. The solution to zero point energy, for example. One way that you can vet the tasker is to do a Google search on the person's name. Now, if you're the viewer, I wouldn't recommend that you do it. I would recommend that someone else that you trust does it. They can simply Google this person and find out as much as they can about the person. Hopefully the person's not a criminal and doesn't have a police record and isn't trying to have you do something nefarious. We had a situation come up once where uh, there was a missing person case and this tasker was saying, please, you know, I really need to find my daughter She disappeared X amount of time ago, and I have to find her, and I've looked everywhere, and blah, blah, blah. But what if in this particular case, the father actually molested the daughter, and she has a restraining order against him? And you innocently do a session for him, leading him right to the daughter, when that could be a very bad thing. And that's why it's very important as a new viewer not to take on cases from people you don't know and that you don't trust. Make sure you have someone who can act as a go-between between between you and the person who needs information. That's very important. Remember that you are the most important person because nothing is so important that it's worth losing a viewer over, okay? There's no target that is so important 
that we're willing to lose you over it. If the project manager or the person that you have acting as the go-between knows the tasker, or at least knows someone who does know the tasker, hopefully he or she can ask around and get some more information about the tasker, the person who needs the information. When you get into actual operational viewing, we have viewer agreements and we have client agreements. These are legal documents that we actually have the various parties who are participating in the viewing project sign and they are agreeing to uphold certain standards. The client agreement, one of the things that it requires of the client is that they provide feedback as soon as they are able to do it. As soon as they have any information that they could give back to the viewer to help validate the viewer's viewing so that they can say, wow, I, I did a great job. I actually saw something or I actually got something. That's very, very important. Another thing we ask the viewers to do is that they are taking on the responsibility of being a viewer and they are going to hold harmless anyone else in the project uh, for if, if they have a bad reaction to a target. Now, it doesn't happen very often. I had a bad reaction to a target once when the target had to do with what would be the worst scenario or what would be the worst thing that could happen during a certain period of time. Those types of targets I find are draining and they are difficult to view. At the same time, sometimes those, that type of target is necessary. And as a viewer, we just have to kind of soldier up and do it. At this point though, I think you're probably still a pretty new viewer. So I just want to caution you, know who you're viewing for. If you don't know them, find out, get all the information you can. You don't want to accidentally be viewing for a terrorist organization. So take precautions. And I'm not sharing this with you to try to scare you in any way. As you know, I have been a remote viewer since 1996. I'm still here. I'm still doing great. Nothing horrible's happened to me. The thing that I want you to know is that we have to take ordinary common precautions to protect you as the viewer. And that's your responsibility. You're the only one who can protect yourself. So you need to protect yourself, you need to know who you're viewing for, and just make sure that you keep everything on the up and up. Thanks so much for joining me this week for your PRV moment. Remember, don't let this scare you. It's nothing scary. You'll probably be fine. Just take ordinary precautions. And be sure and join me next week for your PRV moment. This is Lori Williams, and I'll see you next time.